The lovable sidekick has become an absolute staple in movies, stealing people's hearts while the hero takes center stage. Some of our favorite actors have played supporting characters, reminding us that even though the story is not completely about them, it won't be complete without them. Today, we're going to be looking at supporting characters in movies who died absolutely heartbreaking deaths. We're getting a little teary-eyed just thinking about them all, so let's dive right in. Up first, Rue from The Hunger Games. Rue is a 12-year-old District 11 resident who's chosen as a tribute for the 74th Hunger Games. <laughs> As the movie progresses, she becomes closer to Katniss Everdeen, played by Jennifer Lawrence. Katniss basically equates Rue to her little sister Prim, which leaves the viewers heartbroken at her eventual death. Rue's name means sorrow, so it's kind of clear that once she forms a partnership with Katniss, things won't go as planned for her. Rue is brilliant, beautiful, and just too pure to get caught up in the chaos of the cruel games. When she's tragically shot in District 1 by a boy, it also feels like a blow to your chest. Later, Katniss soothes her young friend by singing to her and covering her with flowers. That scene just ripped our hearts out. Coming up next, Mufasa from The Lion King. Okay, can we just talk about the drama around Mufasa's death? Lies, deceit, and scars chilling long live the king. Still, one of the most devastating movie deaths of all time, whether in the animated or live action picture, is the death of Simba's father, The Lion King. Time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba. Scar, Mufasa's brother, carefully plans Mufasa's demise because he wants his throne. The animated film executed it pretty realistically, even if the movie is about cartoon lions. We all remember the growing horror when Mufasa was clinging to the mountainside and begging Scar for help. Let's not talk about when Simba asked his dad to wake up. We had to take a little break from watching so our hearts won't get crushed to pieces. Following up, Ricky Baker from Boys in the Hood. Movie theaters rarely fall silent, but when Ricky Baker, played by Morris Chestnut, is shot dead while running for his life, Man, let's split up. No, man, I don't think we should do that. I mean, if we gotta throw some heads, I think it'd be better for the game. It's a shock that is both clever and tragic. Ricky is a regular student who leads a mediocre life. His only chance of leaving the hood life his brother Doughboy loves is to do well enough on the SAT to qualify for financial aid. After a fight with a rival gang, Doughboy's rivals turn on Ricky with their pistols. Even more upsetting than witnessing it is accepting the fact that the person who never created trouble and was just trying to make a better life for themselves was killed so senselessly. It also leaves the viewers thinking about gang violence and how many brilliant young voices were silenced as a result of it. Now for Han Solo from Star Wars The Force Awakens. If you're a Star Wars fan, we know you freaked out in December 2015 when Han Solo unexpectedly died in The Force Awakens. One of the most significant character arcs in the Star Wars story is Han Solo's, who's portrayed by the legendary Harrison Ford. Through the original trilogy, fans watched him change from villain to hero, but his redemption arc comes to an end with his tragic demise. Fans and critics alike were captivated with the rugged yet charming smuggler who is the perfect anti-hero and one of the most beloved characters in the Star Wars galaxy. We were obsessed from the very moment he first appeared on screen. Han is desperately trying to turn his kid away from the dark side in The Force Awakens, which makes it all the more devastating when his own son kills him. What made things worse was that Han seemed to have died for no particular reason. His body was then dumped into a pit and the entire planet was destroyed. Cue tears, heartbreak, and outrage. Up next, Private Silas Trip from Glory. Glory is the first big cinematic picture to tell the tale of black American troops. Where you going, boy? Let me buy. Let you buy who fought in the Civil War to end slavery. Denzel Washington's role as Private Silas Tripp was so good, it ended up earning him his first Oscar. Tripp is a runaway slave missing from the 54th Massachusetts Infantry. After learning that Tripp only wanted to obtain shoes that black soldiers had been denied, Colonel Robert Shaw jumps to aid them. He fights to give the infantry the equipment they need and even equal pay. Tripp's troubled soul is resilient and defiant despite all difficulties. After Shaw is shot and killed during the battle at Fort Wagner, Tripp picks up the American flag and dies as he rushes into the gunfire. Trip turns into a source of pride and grief, especially when you witness Shaw's dead body falling into a mass grave with his. His braveness till the very end is sure to leave viewers heartbroken. Following up, Radio Rahim from Do the Right Thing. Spike Lee based Radio Rahim's fate on the murder of black graffiti artist Michael Stewart in 1983 by New York City Transit Police. Even though Radio Rahim wasn't the most popular person in the neighborhood, his martyrdom was the result of his unwavering defiance toward everyone, including 
including the police, neighbors who wanted him to turn his boombox down, racist pizza shop owners, and people who dissed his love and hate rings. After the final argument about photos not being posted on the wall with Sal bugging out and Sal's sons, Radio Rahim's tragic death brings the audience to tears and uncomfortable silence. Rahim's death in the movie triggered the actual fires that soon broke out in bed -Stuy. He inspired people who were suppressed for too long to stand up and say they won't take it anymore. Coming up, John Coffey from The Green Mile. The Green Mile is heartbreaking, but what made us cry the most was when the sweet and docile John Coffey, played by Michael Clark Duncan, died. Coffey is a prisoner who was wrongly found guilty of murder and given the death penalty. He has healing magical powers and is also gentle, sensitive, and honest, despite the fact that everyone in the institution, including prison officer Paul Edgecombe, quickly realizes that Coffey is innocent of his so-called crimes. The date of his execution is still set. Viewers' emotions are forever changed by the last scenes. Coffey begs Edgecombe to hold his hand before he is executed and requests that the black hood not be placed over his head because he is scared of the dark. Now for Shelby Eatonton Latchery from Steel Magnolias. When Shelby, played by the stunning Julia Roberts, marries the love of her life, she's excited to create a family with him. Sadly, because she has type 1 diabetes, her doctor recommends against trying to conceive. Shelby is headstrong and keen not to allow her diagnosis to stop her from getting what she wants, much to the dismay of her mother, Malin. When she learns that she's finally pregnant, Shelby is over the moon. However, just as was expected, her health quickly deteriorates. Her loved ones are forced to watch as she struggles with this difficult time. When Shelby's kidneys fail after giving birth to a baby boy named Jackson Jr., she's forced to go through a kidney transplant using a kidney donated by her mom. Shelby's body rejects the kidney on Jack Jr.'s first birthday, and she passes very shortly after. Her death is not only painfully sad, but is made even more emotional by the realization that Shelby gave her life to save her sons. Following up, Eric Killmonger Stevens from Black Panther. T'Challa's cousin Killmonger is played by the gorgeous Michael P. Jordan, and even though he violated every law in Wakanda and the U.S., his death was still heartbreaking. Killmonger, like most villains, has a backstory. He loses his father at a young age, is misjudged, and the hardships he encounters regularly make him all the more endearing. T'Challa injures Killmonger fatally, but he refuses life-saving treatment and is carried to a mountain with him to view the sunset. Killmonger views death as preferable than imprisonment, which intensifies the tragedy of his death. Last but not least, Cleo Sims, Frankie Sutton, and T.T. Williams in Set It Off. Three different characters all experience the same terrible fate in this movie. Cleo, played by the iconic Queen Latifah, advises that she and her friends Stoney, Frankie, and T.T. attack a bank after a group in their neighborhood pulls off a robbery. Given that their buddies die after being arrested, it becomes pretty clear that things won't turn out well. To put it simply, the crew becomes greedy, blows the money they've taken, and keeps going when they should have quit. Even still, it's awful to watch as all of them die one by one, leaving Stoney as the only survivor. As a viewer, it feels crushing to know that she'll be living with the guilt long after her friends are buried. That's all for today. Is there any death on the list that made you cry, or do you think we missed out on any character on our list? If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.